guys, we've reached that time of year where it's time for me to bring you guys my personal favourite video of the year to make. And just as a little disclaimer, I did not see every movie that came out this year. And before we get into the top 10 best movies of 2018, as always, I'd like to bring you guys a few honourable mentions that didn't quite make the cut, but were still some of my favourite films of the year. Starting with... Game Night, a very fun comedy featuring both Jason Bateman and Rachel McAdams, and in my opinion was definitely one of the funniest movies that I saw this year. The next honourable mention is... Skyscraper, in my opinion Dwayne The Rock Johnson's best acting performance to date, a very much yes, a homage to both Die Hard and Towering Inferno, but a very fun movie all around, and I, for one, ended up coming out of this one really enjoying just the action aspect and some of the mystery that surrounded it. The next movie on my honourable mentions list is... Aquaman. Just such a fun movie, and... DC's best movie in quite some time, in my opinion, and it, for me, again, it stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with both Man of Steel and Wonder Woman, and this is the avenue that DC should keep going down, and by building their universe slowly and not trying to rush headfirst into Justice League. The next on my honourable mentions list is... Ralph Breaks the Internet, just a fantastic sequel and a brilliant follow-up to the original. And it would have been as good as the first one had it not been for one scene. And here I can, of course, spoil that, which is where Vanellope breaks out into song. To me, there was no need for this Wreck-It Ralph franchise, if you want to call it that now, to cross that traditional Disney trope, in my opinion. It could have been completely separated from that, in my opinion. The next movie on my honourable mentions list is... Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Now, this has to be an absolutely just fantastic movie. I mean, it tells the origin story of Miles Morales, and it's all about passing on the torch from Peter Parker to Miles Morales. All along the way, they meet all the different Spider-People from the multiple Spider-Verses that are out there and just deliver a hell of a great movie that for me stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with both Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man Homecoming even though in my opinion, bear in mind this is my opinion, it isn't quite as good as Spider-Man Homecoming but it's still a great film nonetheless. The next movie on my honourable mentions list is... Stan and Ollie. Now this was an absolutely Brilliant biopic, in my opinion, telling the story of Stan and of Laurel and Hardy's last ever UK tour before both of them went into retirement and trying to get a film off the ground that ultimately never happened. Now, as you already know from my review, I was a little worried about John C. Riley and Steve Coogan being as well known as they were, but they absolutely became Laurel and Hardy and delivered a very believable and fantastic film. Okay, the last movie on my honourable mentions list, just narrowly missing the top 10, but in my opinion, this is still a really good movie, and that movie is... Solo, A Star Wars Story, a very fun space adventure movie set within the Star Wars universe. Alden Reinreich has great chemistry with the new Chewbacca, and Donald Glover as... Lando Calrissian, and in my opinion, this movie is actually better than Star Wars The Last Jedi. Yes, I said that. Come at me, Star Wars fanboys. So now, without further ado, we get into the main meat of this video. The reason why you've all come here, and that is my top 10 best movies of 2018. Started at number 10 with... A Star Is Born. Bradley Cooper's crowding achievement of directing, in my opinion, and Lady Gaga's best acting performance. And in my opinion, she absolutely deserves to win Best Actress at the Oscars next year. At number nine is... 
searching. Just an absolutely brilliant, innovative film about a man who is trying to search for his missing daughter. But the way how it's all done through video calls and Skype calls and ultimately all through a computer is just nothing short of fantastic and is one of the most mind-blowing films of the year. At number eight is... Beautiful boy, in my opinion, Steve Carell's best acting performance to date, and he absolutely deserved to win Best Supporting Actor for this movie, alongside a magnificent cast and a brilliant father and son relationship as Steve Carell's character tries to help his son deal with his drug addiction and ultimately beat it, but the ending is what surprises you. At number seven is... Creed 2. Now, if there was an, any kind of follow-up to Rocky IV, this is definitely the movie that I would be very happy with that came along. Set a few years after the original Creed, we see that Adonis Creed has grew a little. He's now the world champion. Rocky Balboa is still in his corner, of course, played by Sylvester Stallone. And you get just the ultimate revenge tale. And you learn a lot by the time you get to the end of this film about different father and son relationships. And number six is... Mission Impossible Fallout, by far the best action movie of the year. Tom Cruise proving that he still has the chops to pull off some absolutely insane stunts within this franchise. Now, while for me, personally, not as good as Mission Impossible Road Nation, which is my favourite Mission Impossible movie, still a great film, still a worthy follow-up to Rogue Nation, and if the Mission Impossible franchise stopped here, I wouldn't complain, but apparently there is more in the franchise, so... I say bring it on. Okay, coming in at number five is... Incredibles 2. Now, this was definitely worth the 12-year wait between films, in my opinion. And just delivered a fantastic movie. A brilliant follow-up. Brad Bird certainly knew what he was doing with this plot, and he had every right to wait until this one to bring us a very worthy sequel to the original Incredibles. At number four is... Isle of Dogs. In my opinion, Wes Anderson's absolute masterpiece and an absolute groundbreak in animation featuring an all-star cast and a fantastic story that if you guys haven't seen this movie yet, I know that you will all fall in love with just the way I did. Coming in at number three is... Ready Player One. Now this was Steven Spielberg's absolute return to form as a director as he adapts this novel practically perfectly and delivers such an incredible movie, particularly with the visual effects and the CG animation, just some of the best I've seen this year in a live action film. And this was one film I saw in 3D this year that was actually worth the extra admission fee to see this movie in 3D. Okay, we're almost there, but coming in at number two is... Avengers Infinity War. Now, this was the ultimate payoff that has been building up for the last 10 years in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, bringing together almost every character that you've known to love over the last 10 years of the MCU. Now, granted, a couple of characters had to take a back seat for this one, but it was understandable why, and the Russo brothers, in my opinion, balanced every character just about right. And I, for one, ended up really enjoying this movie. And in my opinion, it's definitely one of my all-time favourites now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay, before we get to my number one, we're going to count down from ten to two. So at number ten is A Star Is Born. At number nine is Searching. At number eight is Beautiful Boy. At number seven is Creed 2. At number six is Mission Impossible Fallout. At number five is Incredibles 2. At number four is Isle of Dogs. At number three is Ready Player One. And at number two is Avengers Infinity War. Okay, you guys have waited long enough. Now, this probably is not going to come as a surprise to anybody, but this is, in my opinion, 
my number one movie of 2018, which is... Bohemian Rhapsody. Now, this movie delivered everything it promised, in my opinion. Yes, there was quite a lot of historical inaccuracies, which I know annoyed a lot of Die Hard Queen fans. Now, me personally, being a Die Hard Queen fan, a lot of them didn't annoy me, except for one that I would change, which was the fact that Freddie didn't know who Smile were, which was Tim Staffel, Brian May, and Roger Taylor. I would have had just one little acknowledgement scene in that in the movie, you know, acknowledging that they all knew each other prior to the first meeting, if you will. But no, an absolutely fun movie, and Rami Malek absolutely deserves to win Best Actor at the Oscars, as he completely became Freddie Mercury. And the rest of the cast just absolutely became the remaining members of Queen as well, which was just an incredible sight to see, and definitely one of the best biopics of all time, in my opinion. So guys, that does it for another year. That is my top 10 best movies of 2018. I hope you all enjoyed it. And now it's over to you. So feel free to comment below and tell me what your top 10 best movies of the year are. I'm really curious to find out. And as always, guys, if you are new to my channel, feel free to click here to see more and subscribe. So I do make new videos as often as I can. And don't forget to click that bell so that you're always notified of whenever a future video is posted. And after the new year is going to be a video of me telling you guys how the format of reviews is going to go in 2019 because it is going to change a little. So as always, guys, I shall see you all on the next one. Take care and have a happy new year.